The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMD's Alpha Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too and there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world of investment choice that goes beyond borders. Open up a world of investment opportunity with NetWealth, where you can access local and international securities, as well as bonds and foreign currency options for wholesale clients. Offer your clients flexibility, transparency, and efficiency with managed accounts, managed funds, and access to non-custodial assets. A world of investment awaits you. Discover it at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantidis and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into oh. Scientium is, well, has a puppy dog in the background, clearly, because I can <laughs> hear the dog. I love that. <laughs> Sorry, Peter. <laughs> Not at all. I love it. My dog, I, luckily. I really think she would bark and so, <laughs> at the door because she'd hear me because uh <laughs> that is the best beginning ever because my dog Chewy manages to sit quietly through most, but then he starts snoring and I always wonder if it's going to get loud. Oh, this is a fantastic intro. I love it. So he is a fellow Macquarie University alumni like myself, also the oh. MD of a financial advisory and accounting practice. However, clearly decided that that just didn't keep him busy enough is because he's be also become a tech founder, just to, you know, make sure his days are filled. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, Nigel Baker. Woo! Welcome, welcome. Great to be here, Peter. Thanks for having me. What an intro. I reckon that that might win for me out of the 47 <laughs> episodes the we <laughs> have. Not at all. The puppy is – puppies are always welcome on the podcast. So before we pick your brain about all things c and let's just get to know you a bit better through your use of technology. Now, emojis are the thing, right? What is your your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? Yeah, well, um, look, it, it has to be just a simple thumbs up. That's got to be the most used. But, um, you know, I don't mind the odd um, exclamation mark or I guess the occasional love heart as well, you know. Yeah, okay. Okay. But the simple stuff. We like Nothing the simple to, yeah, communication. I'm not into the, uh, the fancy, you know, drop, drop down and find all these other sort of images that gets a bit too complicated. <laughs> no problem. Um, and so, look, we now all live with our smartphones almost permanently attached to us, some of us on our wrists, I guess. If you had to get rid of everything on your smartphone and just keep three of the apps, which of the three, which of them would you keep? Well, I've got three children who have uh, got busier lives than I do, and um, their, their school apps are quite phenomenal, actually. So I couldn't live without the school app, so I know what's going on, what events are on this weekend, all the updates to the wow. various dance and sporting things. So. That would be number one. I, if I didn't have this sports app and I was able to, well, there's school apps for all their activities and a big drill <laughs> trying to juggle three of them around. Um, so, yeah, that's number one. Spotify, of course, number two, listening to your podcast and, um, and many others. <laughs> Thank I've become, you. I've become a, a real, um, obviously, a podcast listener, and uh, I think that's been a great innovation in the last couple of years and a great way to learn and keep on top of things. So um, Yeah, for sure. And then, you know, just – just WhatsApp, you know, million WhatsApp chats. I just need, need a WhatsApp chat to run the WhatsApp chat, I think. <laughs> yeah. <a> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. My my most frustrating thing actually is I wish Spotify had a way that as you're in the middle of something, like in the car, I'm listening to a podcast because most of the time it's passive listening, isn't it? You're like, mm. you're just, it's like background listening. But then you think, oh, that's a good idea. And I need to be able to like press a button to send myself like a message, like a voice message or something. Go, yeah. Peter, remember these three points? Because that's the most frustrating thing for me is moving from passive listening into quick remind yourself to do something when, you, when you're listening to a podcast. That's a really good idea. That's um, yeah, you build right. that down. It's true, isn't it? You try to remember it and try to 
jot it down or text it to yourself or something like that. Exactly, exactly. Like, <laughs> please, please, please remember to do this. All right, yeah. let's yeah. dive into Scientium. I um, came across you guys at the Advisor Innovation Summit, which we both attended in the last few weeks in Sydney and Melbourne, and I was really fascinated by – uh, both the tool itself, but the reason it came up for you, like the reason that that you've embarked on this. So, to begin with, in case somebody you know listening isn't aware of your app, then just at a high level, where does it sit in the advice tech space? Like, who is it lined up again? What category does it sit sit in? Yeah, Peter. Well, we started this because we're, we're we're advisors, like like you are running an advice mm-hmm. business, and we wanted to solve that problem for the younger sort of intergen type clients to start with. That's where this journey started. To so say, how do we find a a digital, you know, more interesting solution for this next generation of clients coming through? Um, I suppose where it's evolved is that you know what does you know, what does the future of advice look like? And we started to really think about, well, shouldn't we be thinking about this digital journey for all clients? And yep. yes, it's um, start with those clients that perhaps didn't fit the mold for the traditional advice practice and um, but started to look at well shouldn't we be able to offer a service to all types of clients in the new world and uh, that's right. and that's that's where we where we got to yeah now when you look on your website the you know the words like portal and everything appear but but having seen you present now and and doing some digging it's a portal in that you're logging into something but it's not just like a it's not a document hold or, you know, like it's no, not this yeah. thing that's that's passive. So talk us through actually what the client then, you know, is experiencing or seeing when they're logging into the tool. Yeah, we had this um, crazy idea to make it really sort of education-based, so really just strip out the the product and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, we know there's product at the end of the day, but how do we put the client first and, and flip it around and say, what, are, what would a client use on this and what are they what are they looking for? And, and all the data and research is showing that particularly younger, but I'm finding older clients as well, are really – Really, after that sort of short, sharp information, whether it's video or and be able to be intuitive and be able to engage with that and learn, do a bit of their own learning and research online before they mm-hmm. come in for a meeting or before they engage with you. And so, we wanted to make that um, you know portal as as a word really something that they can engage with and sort of self help. So the first step okay. is they effectively self help, and then they can take a pathway and start to go down a journey and go, okay, I'm on the self help stage, and and that's great. But now I do want to get some basic advice, and then maybe evolve into full advice down the track. So okay. Effectively, that 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 funnel for could could be done on, online. So then, from a practice's sense, of they're sort of um, putting this in, like you say, their engagement funnel way out from somebody who's maybe what we would call not ready for advice, right? That's sort of the category we're talking about. Whether that's because of age or all sorts of things, um, yeah. Yeah. then it's a a way that they can self serve on some content, maybe even like a little bit of a program style. Is that what you mean? So it's yeah. like some sort of delivery of some content that they can learn and engage with um, and then eventually is there also the possibility of them doing so so I'm betting that there's like they can do that for free it could be a yep. paid program it could be like how how are the different ways they can engage with the platform yeah we, we, we built it to be so it's a it's a, a platform that the advisory firm or the, or the, um, actually uses white labels for their service yep. so they can so for example uh a client that might not be ready yet, but is just checking them out, they can they can offer that to them for free and say, "Look, there's some content Perfect. on here. You can uh, attend a course. You can attend our one of our regular updates. You can upload, go and see our most recent videos, uh, read a few articles. You know, leave three or four articles up there. So they get a bit of a feel for you in a you know a bit of a digital format. They start to see mm-hmm. you as a person, in some mm-hmm. of your videos, and then they can they can book in a like a session, like a 10, 15 minute, half an hour session." It's all within the site, so they're not leaving and going out to Zoom or Teams or anything like that. Yeah. And then the the advisor can obviously then have that quick um, chat and guide them and and, and get an understanding of uh, you know are they are they after full advice? Are they just looking to learn a bit more about savings, etc. But I, I suppose for us, two way is the client's getting a good experience, but the advisor starting to build that relationship, and that that relationship might take a couple of years for that client to come through, or they could be ready yep. in the next month to start the process. So rather than not have anything at all and say, well. Traditionally, advice practices, because that's where the you know the revenue was, and you know mm. people run businesses to make money. Uh, we can admit <laughs> that, but also because of the law. So then there was a regulation saying, well, we can't really help this guy or the client. So let's just keep focusing on these complex high net worth clients, and that's great. But so therefore, most advisory businesses only have really one solution. You know, they're one offering, which is cool. But how do we bring that down and say you can offer something to other clients, and you can do it in a really economical way, a really low cost way for the business, but also something that's really economical and and a low price point for the um, prospect that can start to build that that longer term relationship and give them access to some quality information and some 
quality advisors. You know, we're advisors. We believe in yeah. advice, but we know that advisors can't help thousands of clients in the current business model. Right. And it's a, it's a really interesting thing to force yourself to think through because we're so used to starting at the point of advice, right? Mm. So it's like yeah. they're ready yeah. for advice and they've said yes, and then we yeah. build everything after that. <laughs> yeah. Whereas yeah. Yeah. most offerings, like if you come up with any new, like as a consultant or an entrepreneur, most offerings, they spend f- most of their effort on the before that point because they acknowledge that's the hard task. That's the yes. part of getting them in the funnel and even self-qualifying. And I think that could be an interesting thing to use this for is yeah. letting the client qualify for themselves yeah, if they absolutely. need assistance, they you know. Can, yeah. And and if you find you could you could have that sort of self-qualifying experience, you know, we're talking like a program, it takes them through some steps or whatever it might be that, like you say, could be free. At the end of that, even if the answer isn't advice, you could – set up a call, you know, like you say, for 10 or 15 minutes with each of them. And if you start collecting why that's the case, why they're not ready for advice, what they need right then, then you could just build another program <laughs> that answers that challenge, you know, it could, and it could even be a low dollar. It could be a few hundred dollars and you've put another one in the, in, you know, CNTM that answers that challenge. And at least they're getting a solution. You know, maybe it's not advice, but they're getting value. Yeah. And that's what, that's what exactly, that's what we're trying to say. How do we give value to this cohort of um, people who don't need full advice but would like to engage in some way or format. Now, we don't really change our thinking around that. As you said, it's not starting with advice. It's yeah. starting with a journey and trying to remove all that. We know what's happened in the past and all the regs and we're saying that it's got to be compliant but you've got to start to think about well, what does the client, what do they want to seek? They want to start to build a relationship and get some information and, as you said, self, self-test self themselves and do a course and say, yeah, I, I'd like, I can see the benefit of advice. I'm ready for it or no, I, I can work this out online. Thanks, but I'm willing to pay you couple of dollars a year to be, you know, in the system and getting some content. So there's just different ways I think we've got to think about um, um, serving these people because, you know, we can't we can't give full complex advice to millions of people, but we can certainly give people access to quality information and quality advice, quality advisors. Insight, um, yeah. Yeah, um, and that's where we would be able to go. We don't want them searching and doing Google searches of people who aren't qualified and doing the wrong thing, right, and getting caught up with scams or who knows what. Exactly. I remember um, I was running, I was actually doing, preparing for a presentation to the industry and, you know, we use analogies for what we do and, oh, you know, advisors might be like the GP or they might be like the specialist, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And and I just run some con- concepts past this person who's outside the industry and they're like, Peter, I've just got to call you out on something. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, well, based on the dollars and the experience and all the stuff you guys do, you guys are more like neurosurgeons <laughs> and <laughs> what we need are the normal specialist or the GP. Like- <laughs> Like, and it's an interesting, it's an interesting analogy where what we haven't built is all those things in between. Yeah, that's before right. they need to get to the neurosurgeon that's going to charge them thousands of dollars. You know, so it's yeah. a, yeah. it really clarified for me. I'm like, yeah, we're missing this. There's this big gap, you know. Yes. And if they don't get it from us, there's all sorts of places they're going to get them. They're going to get information from that won't necessarily help them out. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah, which is a struggle. So in terms of the practices that this will this works well for, I'm really curious of where you've seen this sort of this tool really hum yep. versus others that may struggle. Is there anything they've either done beforehand or ways they've Im- implemented it that just really ramped up the experience? Yeah, it's a good good question. I think um you tend to get the um uh the you know, the owner or the leader of the business who's a little bit more wanting to, you know, take on new ideas and you know, gets excited. Yeah. Um, and I'm one of those, and, and sees the shiny Me light. Goes, this is great, and then they come into the business, and then go yeah, great. We've got this new idea. Go work it out. So we found early on that um, we needed to get to the you know to the advisors or the managers and get to the people who are actually going to be hand holding this because they need to sort of you know obviously understand how to explain to the clients and what they're offering now is and, and that sort of thing. So certainly a, a learning path for us being being a, you know we've, we've been traditional advisors our lives suddenly getting a neck out into a tech world and. And how to yeah. how can people use it and and seeing things from our perspective, but also seeing how other businesses could use things. So certainly that experience of um, getting getting involved with the team, uh, understanding how it benefits their clients, how it benefits them. How you know people are a little bit afraid of technology, as you know, so a little bit mm. afraid of change. And as you said, that we've been so trained to go, no, I can only I can only talk about advice, and if I don't, it's advice or nothing. Um, and trying to change that mindset, be going, yeah, but you're allowed to. The law completely says you're allowed to talk about actual information. As much as you like, you know, and and we want we don't want you we want you talking about it. We don't want the guy at the service station talking about super, you know, not super petrol, but super anyway. So we we want you being the conduits of this information. So um, yes, there's some boundaries, and and you just use some common sense and some 
compliance guidelines around at what point you need to engage uh, from a personal advice point of view under the current rules. But you can you can really um, ext- extend your knowledge um, under under the current legislation without it causing any problems. And I think people just need to get comfortable with that. that, that um, and in fact, I think that's what the regulators would like to see. You know? Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. And I think um, we do get caught up in – understandably the legislation is there we get why it's there in fact with some of the challenges with you know crypto for influencers and all that sort of yeah. stuff you can see why this yeah. they want to protect yeah. this sort of stuff because they can go pear-shaped when they don't but i agree with you that probably the skill that i don't think advisors realize they do and realize you can um convert or, or amplify is that coaching element it's not the yeah. It's not the technical advice element. It's the, there's a lot of emotional and transformational coaching we do, hmm. and that stuff's perfect for programs and and you know giving them things to do and things to learn and and all sorts of stuff that it's we repeat it enough. We know what people go through, you know, and so you know you could have a couple of different ones that you set up based on where they're at, you know, or what experiencing they have or what challenges they're facing, or I mean, and and particularly for your niche, I mean, it would be so cool if. Advise you know maybe they're into I don't know maybe they themselves do marathons internationally well how can you afford to do three maris three international marathons a year like you could do all sorts of interesting yeah programs that really engage people that you're not going to do advice on like you're not going to charge yeah. somebody five and a half thousand for an advice on but what a great engagement tool that actually gives them something they want you know I think yeah. it's um it's a clever it's a clever way to approach so then. Is the tool, and excuse my ignorance for this question, is it an actual app that they download onto their phone or is it a login, a web portal? It's a web portal. So the the um, we call it a, a tenant. It's just our internal word. Each firm gets built out a tenant, which is their okay. their branded site. And so it's yep. like a little website. Our website just embeds into their current website. Uh, they simply, it, it looks and feels like it's just part of their current website, but they can set a client up on there. They can just guide the client to the link. Um and they can obviously see all that activity. They can see uh, one of the other benefits we've, we've found is that you can see all that activity uh, of what people are watching and listening. So you might find that uh, a topic on interest rates obviously right now is really important, but you can really see how much people are engaging that. And it's, right. it's sort of UI driven, a bit like a Facebook, so that yep. if I'm on there and I'm, 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 I've already attended a session on interest rates and I've read another article on interest rates, guess what? The next thing that happens, I'm going to get fed all the interest rate stuff. So yeah. that advisor or expert is talking about that, I'm going to start to engage with that advisor because they're, they're lining up with what I'm interested in. So it's yeah. more than likely I'm going to book a session with that advisor. She's already done two sessions that I've attended. She's really an expert. I can see that I'm, I'm liking the sound of her expertise mm-hmm. and, and bang, I book a time in. And then that, that advisor or expert will then guide me and say, yeah, great, stay on the portal, self-help. I can give you some limited advice or, hey, you sound like we could really help you come in for a you know, uh, a full advice session, which can be still digital or, or in person, yeah. Yeah, okay. So it just gives those pathways op- pathway options, yeah, and, um, um, yeah, and, and, and engaging so that content can be driven by the firm. Obviously, some of the firms obviously want us to help them get set up with that, which we which we do, and we provide that those building blocks. Mm-hmm. Um, but then off they go. They can build out that content how they, how they please. Okay, because that was my next question is um, I'd imagine there'd be some advisors out there like, that sounds fantastic. Oh, my God, how much content am I going to create? And, and like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, right? Yeah, so- like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Anything like it, it is very easy to use, but we, we, we've got a, a, a library now of so much stuff that they, we can say you can have all this. You just, okay. you know, it's all going to look like and feel like you, but you can just take all the current stuff and, and start to just use that and, and going forward as well. If they're a smaller firm, obviously that's just another – other thing they have to do, so they can yeah. they can just um, piggyback on the back of what we're pushing out. Um, they can pick and choose, obviously, what they like. But some of the bigger firms, obviously, want to create their own content. And a lot of them have a fair bit of content, but it's all over the place. It's yeah. it's not consistent. It's on an email system. It's on a they might have a YouTube channel going. It's all over that, and they can't track from one to the other. So this also brings all that data together, and you can see who's attending what, and uh, you nice. know which which experts are. You know you can monetize that as well, so sessions can be charged. Uh, on as well for people to attend so yeah, yeah okay. it's pretty cool and is there just on that so in terms of being able to charge people is there the ability say for example i mean i could see an environment where you might want your clients to be able to see you know attend for free but hey to be nice if yep. for that event somebody was charged because they're external is that possible to absolutely. find a way yep. to do that yep. yeah absolutely so it's either yeah, a okay. free session or chargeable but you give your clients the code so it's just a you know like Perfect. a discount code or a free code to, to log in um, yeah, because it's an interesting habit too that I, I got um, 
hauled up on by uh, overseas. They're, they're like a, a, you know, an entrepreneur online and they do all sorts of stuff and sell their programs. And they said the mistake most people make for their free stuff is not making sure everybody knows what it's worth if they did have to pay. Yeah. Like <laughs> we yeah. just go, but yeah. it's free. And it's like, well, no, 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 it's worth Four hundred dollars, but it's free. Is actually the statement yes. you need to make. That's a really good question. Like, and I think that's you know, we got to have value to stuff, right? Like, and so yeah. you've got to. It's nice to say to people, look, we these sessions we think are, you know, well they're worth thirty dollars, forty dollars, hundred dollars, but hey, you're getting it for free because you're already a client. That's yeah. But um, that way if they're referring someone in, or the case may be, there's an expectation, there's a price for that because there's value in the value in the content and the time behind it. Yeah. Exactly. And look, a particular practice might decide that each client can even invite a guest if they want to. They might see this as a, a lead generation yeah. exercise and you're going to charge. But but always, you know, contemplating if we did charge, what would it be just yeah. so that you make sure you, you assign value. I like doing that too because it forces me to make sure it's worth that. You know, it sort of makes me lift my game a little. <laughs> you know, am I putting enough value in this um, <laughs> so that then I'd be happy for somebody to have paid that? you know, and, and I would be comfortable with that. Uh, so, so yeah, I'm right there with you. So in terms of, so you, we, you can get, you get the white label for the practice, then it can have some content you guys already have in. However, over time, potentially they can, you know, do their own thing. I like the idea of then having it very clear and easy that they can then make a time with an advisor. It's not something that they've then got to proactively call in or do something right. different. It's all within the portal, um, yeah, you just click which in, makes it's like, a difference. Yeah, it's all linked to the calendar, so it just syncs to your Outlook or whichever calendar system you use. So that Beautiful. way um, it's pretty nice and seamless. Yeah, you're not having to then go, oh, now we've got to start this email chain or whatever and Ugh. lose them. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, and so do you find then, though, that really once the – once they're a client, then for the advice process that is not occurring in the portal, that's occurring elsewhere, or is there documents or anything interchanging within the portal itself? Yeah, we're, 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 there's um, it, you can this, the courses can be say, uh, look, uh, I'd like to now uh, you can be, em, embed your fact find and risk profile questionnaire into it just by adding a link, so you can have a course on okay. saying, right now you're ready for advice, complete course one twenty one, which is. Uh, complete the fact find and yep. have a little video in there and say, hey, no, no, thanks, Peter. You're ready to start the advice process. First thing I need you to do is show on these forms. Here they are. The link and the, it can link straight to your CRM. So some yep. people have used um, uh, Padua, for example. Some yep. have used just HubSpot and just embedded that link in. So that data is going straight through and then they'll use that in their whatever else software they use for yep. um, creating the next step advice yeah, okay. and, uh, as their CRM. So that's totally buildable within it. We're not an SOA builder like we're not no. trying to say we're going to try it this way but you can certainly link that that data form into whoever you're using yeah yeah okay okay perfect um i'm assuming though it's not like a chat function within it is there you can within, chat yeah you can there's, chat. There's okay. a little chat. It's, not, it's not as as much as we thought it would be but it's it, it, there is a chat function okay um, yeah. so if somebody is trying to um i mean you and i both witnessed a cyber security session at the advisor innovation summit yeah. where you know getting trying to get off email as much as humanly possible so if somebody if you did have a client and you are using this for some of the elements of the advice like you say the fact find and other things maybe even understanding risk profiles whatever it might be then they could be talking within the portal um my advisor to yeah. client yeah, there's a there's it's all within the system. So they don't leave it at the messaging system is is all in there tied to um tied to their account. Sorry, I've meant like a little random chat, like a chat bot that's more it is personalized. No. So it'll go from yeah. me to the advisor and back and forward and, and so it's almost like a little Slack system that I can chat to the advisor about. Yeah. Perfect. Well that's yeah. a good thing because cool. we yeah. are all looking for those options, aren't we? Like like it's all well and yeah. good to say we should get off email. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we, uh, we need an alternative. Yeah, <laughs> how else do we chat to people? Okay, so so a practice could be starting this with some of this content, but they could work towards actually sort of really embedding it into the advice process if yeah, they wanted they can, to get really clever. They can. Yeah, what we found is people start with like we we go down that that sort of funnel and go start with the 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 clients that you know again you asked before about the businesses that start stacking on board and go yeah we'd love to have a solution for these younger future clients that are being referred by their parents. So we, we want to make sure we capture something. They start that process and, you know, this is pretty cool, pretty easy. And then they drop to and go, okay, now we can start to use it for the clients that might need a, a little bit more advice. They might need a limited advice. So we want them to talk to an actual advisor. We, yeah. don't want, we want to take from the self-help to an advisor. And then they, they'll start to build out and go, well, actually, we could use this for our top-end clients, but let's let's start at the at the low, easy ones um, before we start saying it also solves a, something for your top-end clients, which – Yeah. Because once people start going down a journey, as you know, they start to use tech better and they start to use yes. it and go, don't be yeah. so scared of it. This is just a way to engage clients and share your content and, and create better client experience. It's not about completely you – know, people are afraid to 
on board another system, right? I get that, yeah. right? You know, but this is pretty pretty easy and uh, and impactful um, from day one. Yeah, and particularly as as um, from your session, my understanding is you guys really have taken a look at the way people interact with the social platforms we're already all using. So that's yeah. there's it's designed to feel familiar. You know, that's that's part of the thing that's hard with some systems is they go, they decide to be really innovative and different, but different is hard with tech because yeah. you just don't, it doesn't feel familiar, you know, so it's got to just feel sort of normal and yeah, I, this, oh, I can watch that video, no big deal, you know, all of that um, can be easier. I mean, I can actually see a really interesting when I think through, so our practice is fully virtual, so we have to get very creative about the ways that we can help clients and, and because it's all done you know, from an arm's length and even having some explanations for some, you know, things like nominated beneficiaries that people, yeah. <laughs> like it's a struggle, right? It's a punish to yeah. get some of those things done, yeah. to have these little mini courses, mm. you know, on CNT yeah. to just go, okay, you've got a particular, you know, platform X, here are the things you need to do. Make sure you do this. The witnesses yeah. need to be like this, like right. to just step somebody here's, through. Here's a little video. And it's, it's just yeah. like those little, it's like, um, you know, the kids watch these little YouTube videos or someone explaining stuff. It's exactly like that. So you're, yeah. you're literally pointing in the spot where you need to sign it, fill this in, sign that section. This is what it all means. Here's the definition. So again, in a business where there's people explaining this all over the business to different people asking it all the time and just getting that consistency as well. But then clients have got this really, next time you go, here's the link. You just, just fill in this and and it's nice and consistent and easier to understand. It is. And it lets them act act quickly. I think people worry that then, well, I'm flick passing them, you know, I should be helping them with that or my senior admin person should be doing that. It's like, well, no, but it also, if they can't get that person, it also lets the client take action earlier because the person even on reception can go, hey, I'm going to send you this yeah. link. I reckon yep. that'll get you started, but I'll make sure that whoever yeah. gives That's you a right. buzz to make sure you're okay. Like it just lets them continue, which we all love. Yeah, you know, we all yeah. love getting that bit of extra information where it means, oh, don't worry about calling me back. I'm on it. Like, I've yeah, that's got right, this yeah. covered, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, I think there's – and what's nice about that is you, you're, the rest of the team can be doing that content. They can just yeah. be grabbed – once a week, I want you to record a video on this type of form, you know, or any of that sort of stuff, um, which is – Yeah, it's a good way to get the younger, younger advisors engaged as well because they can really – I mean, they love this stuff, right? So, they start playing with it and they, they're, they're suddenly getting a, a nice front in front of clients about stuff as well or it's just yeah. – trying to give them that exposure, which in a more digital world is a bit harder for them. So now they can really have a lot of interaction, create a lot of videos, uh, create a lot of the content and um, and get that, you know, so the clients see them a lot more as well. So it just takes away that dependency. Yeah, it does. And and conversely, having, you know, you could probably start to transition some of the more experienced advisors to doing some of the more, I don't know, technical market update stuff. And that could just be content in the platform rather than something the client feels a need to necessarily having actual conversations with maybe their more exactly. junior advisor. You know, it's that combo yeah. of all the skills um, yeah. in the team that can you know, really be utilized. Yeah, Absolutely. it's exciting. So you mentioned the chat isn't used much. Is there any other features that you find that people don't use that you're surprised by. You're like, oh, there's some gold there that people could be implementing. Um, yeah, it's more that chat bot sort of thing. We thought like having that chat body thing, but you can obviously chat within the platform too as, as a more yep. uh, chain sort of chat. Um, yeah, so far, I mean, it's it, as you said at the start, it's, it's about a coaching sort of development and, and, and starting to use. There's, there's a lot of application. I think what we're scared about is giving people too broad a spectrum of <laughs> things to, to talk about the start with. I like try to, yeah. you know, um, one of the things we've, with any tech, is it, it just it's just endless, right? You start to think, well, we could do this, do that, do that, and right, let's just bring it down to let's just do this one first. Let's just keep it simple, and then as you start to get to use it, then you'll you'll see how you can easily add uh, more video or, or things like that. People are a little bit scared of video, but once they see how easy it is, they 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 get onto it. Um, yeah, it's just a natural thing. Some people just get, oh, I don't want to use video. I'm just going to put articles on there. You know, like everyone wants video, that you got to got to get them out of their comfort zone. And say it's really easy. It takes you two seconds. And clients love it, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't worry about the production quality of it. They just want to, yeah. hear, they just want to hear from you, and they, they want to see your voice. And um, and I think that's where the people get st- stuck that they have to wait for the right moment, and the sun's got to be here, and the light's got to be here, and <laughs> they've got to, you know, it's on. They're on stage. It's like, no, don't worry yeah. about that. No. Just, just just press the button and film. <laughs> In fact, we're at the point now with the way we absorb content that we're suspicious if video is overproduced. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Right, yeah. because it looks like, like an ad. <laughs> right, so our brain yeah. goes, wait a minute, that looks a bit slick. What's going on there? You know, so yeah. it does need to feel a bit natural. And the sheer volume you can produce if you're doing video is like ten times what you can if it's so much quicker. Yeah, it is. And it's just all the time so quick. Right anyway. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, so it's just a matter of practice. Even if you forced, you know, listener, if you force yourself just to start recording them, even if you don't release them yet, 
just start recording and practicing them. Um, and then I guarantee you they're better than you think they are. Um, yeah, it's is- a bit of already rain fire. We've got a one take rule. We sort of say, hey, just just do one take to start with. Don't try and take 20 takes. Mm-hmm. Um, the first take will be probably better than your second or third anyway. Um, just give it a go and just roll your sleeves up and give it a go. And and no one likes hearing themselves back on tape either. They go, oh, do I sound like that and things like that if I haven't done much video. <laughs> so we all sound a bit weird. You just got to get on with it. And honestly, the audience isn't worried too much about that. They're just – No. They, they actually – you'll be surprised how your clients will love to see you and they'll come into the next meeting or whatever and go, oh, wow, that well, – you know, and, and you're, you're constantly updating them rather than this old model of you might see them once or twice a year. So that yeah. client's been paying you quite a lot of money for many years and being used to seeing you once or twice a year and they yeah. pay that and now they're going to see you – once a fortnight, or and yeah, they, they're going to go. This is amazing. You know, they yeah. do. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Just yeah. like, I mean, what? It's not, you know, we don't all want to be influencers, but just like there's some people you love absorbing their content, and you will yeah. absorb a lot of it once you find it on social media. This is the same. You're letting somebody absorb as much of your insights as they want to. Yeah. You know, and and why not? You know, yeah. how can yeah. that be a bad thing? You know, this is a good thing. Yeah. Um, well, so, we always yeah. advisors have got so much knowledge to share. We know that. Right? Yeah. We know how much advisors know about, you know, whether it's just from behavioral finance to tax to super to investment allocation, all these sort of things that they just can't share in a conversation. Yeah. So, by able to get that in lots of short grabs and, and the, their clients will go, wow, this, this advisor's knows a lot more than you and like there's so much stuff I can learn yeah yeah, yeah without uh, a doubt and, and being a, being um, uh, brave to share that because some people go well if I share all that then people won't need me I'm going they'll, they'll need you more like yeah. <laughs> you know don't worry <laughs> that, that, you can push all this content out they can get it on a chat box or, you know chat IO or whatever now anyway a lot of that stuff yeah. and they know they're not going to probably use that for advice but what they do want is a relationship and yeah. and just got to get used to that being a bit more of a digital relationship rather than just they have to come and see you face to face one once a year Absolutely, absolutely. And so in terms of integrations then, you mentioned that like of course there can be links that take them through the clients through to say a form or anything like that. Are you at the point where you're integrating with anything yet or is it early days? Yeah, look, um it's it's a pretty early days, but it's it's built with an open architecture to, you know, a, okay. a tech team. I think we're we're really smart that from day one to so we can point to anything that wants to point to us. Yep. Um we did build in a um a link through to setting up um, small balance investment and super accounts because that was asked for day one saying that now these clients are on here and then they're asking to open up an account, but I, I don't want to have to give them a $5,000 SOA. So so we built that connection through um, and that that works straight yep. through processing so they can fill in the form, open up account without, you know, just on a general advice side saying I've, yep. I've, I've filled that in. In terms of integrations to, you know, the X plans and things like that, not, not yet. And if, you know, if, if that was needed, then I'm sure those things are possible. Look, and I guess um, the thing is people often focus on that first when in reality there's a whole lot you've got to have done um, with the system and in then set it up and make it part of your process and when are you going to introduce it and all that sort of thing Ooh, first. Yes, yeah. um, you know, that it, for this one, uh, while I might focus on the integrations with others, I think for this type of tool it can be the last thing because, yeah. you know, that's a nice to have down the track. And I'm sure if somebody came to like if somebody's using it really actively and they've got loads of people on it and it's working like a treat and then they come to you and go, hey, we'd like to talk about this integration, then you're going to be far more receptive to that at that yeah. point because you can see, you know, what they're looking for and and the value it might add. So it's that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, and, and like you say, I think you can still get clever about linking through to things. Yeah, you can. Um, you can you and, can you know, using links. forms and exactly like that, embedded links can get you a long way there um, anyway. Yeah. So what have you got on the development path? What's sort of coming down the line uh, for you guys in the near future, but also is there anything sort of way out there that you'd love to get to that would be the sort of ultimate point for the tool? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. We um we spent um, a lot of time sort of thinking about how do we get this sort of coaching slash video um, type platform into the system, and that was um, a huge win for us. You know, just to, you know, really got that released only six weeks or so ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's that's that was the big thing. Like right now, that that integration where we can have all that in one platform, the the client experience the video, they can run courses, they can f- fill in forms, they can um, and and set through an open up an account. I think mm-hmm. down the track would be having multiple um, providers. So if uh, the moment we've only got one provider linked, if someone yep. so for those small balances, if a big group came along and said, "Hey, all our clients are on Macquarie Wrap or Connie First Aid," then that'd be great. But we haven't linked all that up yet, so that'd be yeah, that'd be next stage. But that'd be demand driven as well. If someone came along and said, "We want to use a platform, but we want it to talk to all our clients are on exact, exa- for example, Connie First Aid," then how can we do that? Yeah. That'd, that'd yeah. be a, a next step stage. Yeah, yeah, for sure, um, and. You know, is there anything 
you know, a big thing down the track? Like if this is really humming, is there anything that's a wish that you, you're not sure you guys could pull off just yet, but it's it's like, whoa, oh. wouldn't it be great if? Like is there any anything like that on the list? Yeah, I think the um, other services like, you know, um, insurance um, is, is, yep. is, is a little bit tricky at the moment. So <laughs> yeah. we, we sort of held that off as well and just, you know, it's just a bit hard to do that online and we've, we've had this philosophy of keeping, you know, not, you know, as a as a low cost sort of offering, and you know we don't want to get caught up with with too much complication there. So I think that that would be nice in time. Um, you know, being linking to accountants, for example, and yep. having other service providers on there and being able to offer their sessions. I think that that would be really cool, and might be estate lawyers and accountants being able to absolutely uh, also come in and share their content and share their ideas. Yeah. Yeah, nice. So a real hub for for what people might be interested yeah. in at that point in time. Because the thing is, for the public, they don't see any of that as different. The fact that we all need to be different bodies to be able to provide it, it's sort of in the same category for them. Yeah. So yeah. it makes sense for the for the end consumer that they could come to one place to do that. So yeah, yeah, that'd yeah be really that cool. makes yeah. a, um, a lot of a lot of sense. Is there anything we've missed? Any of the key features of Centen we've missed that? Um, well, I think we covered all. Yeah, I think I think the key thing is just that it's just a real um, a, a, a different way to to look at that um client engagement to what we've been used to and i think you yep. you know Peter, where you said it's it's, it's it, we used to start with advice we're starting with that pre-advice and we started to engage and build that trust with with knowledge and content um before they need the full you know traditional ad- advice model so i think if we can um give advisors the ability to offer that and yeah you know we, we say in a crazy way wouldn't it be great if advisors could help a thousand people and they think i'm mad but i go it actually is possible and you could do it you could make more money help more people Make make a bigger impact on their lives, and it's not going to mean you've got to work hundred hours a day. You know, like you know, yeah. it is it is it is possible. There's some really cool digital tools, and it's only going to get better. Uh, and yeah. that's a better outcome for the end consumer. It's a better con- outcome for the advice businesses who want to who want to do that. You know, and I think um, luckily, plenty seem interested to to get out there and um, start to, to start to reach out and and use digital differently to perhaps how the industry has addressed digital in the past, where they've sort of looked at it more as a back end solution. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, an exciting new world if you can think a bit creatively, creatively, right? You've sort of got to throw out the old way we've done things and just look at it as a, as an end user and, and yeah. try to think about what they really want. Um, and that's when this will hum. Yeah, actually, the ASX pushed out a report this week, which was really interesting. And they're the most, uh, for all their ASX style investors, they're the most, uh, the highest or the, the most popular search for an ASX investor, so someone who's got listed shares or ETFs, mm. was on um, was on YouTube. <laughs> so, yeah. so we've got to get Absolutely. people advice to control their content a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I completely agree. Yeah. All right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about CNTM, then the website link is in the episode show notes, along with Nigel's LinkedIn details. I'm sure he can then point you to a member of the team that can help you out if you were to reach out and connect with him. Thank you so much for joining us here today, Nigel. I really enjoyed that. And sharing how CNTM can help us see far more clients and engage with far more of the public. I really love it. It's what we should all be doing more of. So thank you so much for your time. So, are you a current user of CNTM? Now, that's fairly early days for them, but you may be, your practice may be one of the early um, people that have tried this out and started to implement it. Um, I'd love to hear what what you found has worked, how your prospects or your clients have engaged with it and, you know, how that's worked for you, what was good, what was a struggle, what you had to learn, you know, all that sort of thing. Please share, share your insights on the Ensemble Community Platform as all of us would love to hear about all this different tech. One of the, one of the most asked questions on the Ensemble Platform is about about a particular piece of tech or how do I implement it? Should I, shouldn't I? So the more we can all be just putting our views on there and sharing our insights, um, then the more value we can collectively bring together. And it even we're even using those posts and the way you guys all share with each other to define who we get on the podcast, what content we provide um, and how we provide it. So I'd really encourage you to get on there and give us that feedback. Now, my thoughts on this. Now, I should admit upfront uh, that I am a big believer in coaching and facilitation being a new world for advice. I think going forward, there's going to be a lot of advice practices that head firmly in this way. There's going to be some that are going to become deeply technical 
Um, and that's the, they're going to be become experts in a particular technical thing. But I think there's going to be a lot of advice practices that be provide a lot of coaching. And when I say what I mean by coaching, it will be an element of some one to many programs. Then it may even be one to one, but it's a defined experience over nine months or something like that. And then there may be some advice, some specific, you know, requires written advice style of offer. So it's, it, this is a different way of thinking. Um, and it, it requires, it requires you to start actually experiencing online programs. If you've never done an online program, you, I mean, I mean, I don't mean about advice. I mean about anything, Facebook ads or how to use Instagram or like whatever you like, if you need to have started to absorb those yourself so that you can then understand what works and what doesn't. Um, one of the insights I wanted to make sure I shared here was, information generally for a course or a program or something like that, no matter how short or long, generally isn't enough. It needs to be a transformation, even if it's a small one. And a transformation generally is the consumer taking some actions. Even it's if it's a make sure you download your super report or make sure you like give them some actions they can take so that at the end of the, even if it's just three videos they watch at the end of that, they feel like they've got a result and they are further ahead than they were when they started. So delivering a transformation and therefore providing actions as part of the program that we design is really important. Uh, and I only learned that by going and doing a whole lot of programs. Um, sitting and absorbing over and over again, just pure information is mind numbing. And you don't actually learn anything because you don't get to implement it yourself. So it really needs to give you some to-dos as part of it. So I encourage you to just Park that as something you're going to need to keep in mind going forward, but absolutely go. And if there's something you need to learn about business or something external, start to engage with some online programs so you can get better at working out what you could deliver to the public that relates to advice. Um, one of the ways that we've done this that we're looking at for our niche market is doing some market research conversations. So I've done some um, video calls. I've had about hmm, – five or six uh, prospects or current clients, but they're in a particular category that we're interested in. And I just t I just ask them questions about what str they're struggling with. Now, the trick, this is a ninja tip here, folks. The trick here is not to make it just about money, right? To ask things like, what what's keeping you up at night? What is the thing you're facing the most struggle with right now that's just, grr, it's like it's so hard, you can't get over this hurdle? And invariably, no matter what it is, it'll invariably relate back to money at some point, right? Um, so you've got to ask those questions to then work out the next best thing that you could do one of these online, you know, on something like CNT and one of these online programs, because you could do a short program there that solved that problem for them, even if it didn't have financial advice is the next step necessarily. But what they've done is they've engaged with you, you've shown insight, you've given them a path to take maybe or a roadmap, um, and they've made some great progress. And then, hey, the next thing you could look at is, and then we can help you with. So, you know, just helping them solve a problem. And it can be big or small. Um, often the small ones uh, like if you can just knock something off really quickly for them and help them get it done, um, are huge winners. Those are lead generation tools. Um, and the thing I'm learning with some of these tools is it's, you know, if somebody's paying for a program, even if it's only a few hundred dollars, it's like they're paying to, for you to market to them. I mean, that sounds all right, right? I mean, we could spend a fortune maybe paying Facebook or all these places to promote us to try and get um, to get clicks and to get leads, or somebody could be doing a, a program that adds real value to them. It helps them self-qualify of whether they need us as an advisor, and um, you know that gives us an opportunity to showcase who we are, and they can engage with us as an individual. So I just think there's some real gems in all of that of the way we can change the way we think about these things. Um, it's taken me time to get to that point, uh, I will admit, and it is a learning process. But um, the more we can sort of put ourselves in our client's shoes and behave, you know, notice how you behave with external things you're learning about um, and you'll start to realize how we as advisors can do things differently to engage with the public. Now, as you know, 
There's only one skill. You need to become a bionic advisor, and that's avid curiosity. So to help you build that habit, today's Curiosity Corner app, oh, my goodness, I I don't think I've ever had an episode with as many tongue twisters as today's episode. Sincere apologies, folks. Let's try that again. Today's Curiosity Corner app, woohoo, we did it, that I wanted to take a look at is called Early Bird. You can find it at earlybird.im. Now, this is interesting. Given what we were just talking about and maybe you're a bit uncertain and you're not sure something's going to be valuable, Early Bird is actually a no-code landing page builder, right? So this helps you very quickly build, pitch, and validate a business idea. Now, in its normal use case, it's used by developers or creative content, you know, content influencers, marketers, maybe somebody writing a book, all sorts of things that you can use to create this sort of landing page pitch document, right? Now, why would I think that could apply to advisors? Well, this could be how you get feedback on the next problem some, you know, your clients might be facing on the coaching offer you might be building, the program you might be pulling together, or even a new advice offer, something that just is tailored to a particular thing you think that your audience or your clients might need, but you're not quite sure, right? So the idea here is to really validate that idea before actually building it out. So I know that sounds, it's a bit reverse for what we do in finance. In in finance, often, you know, even the big product providers spend millions of dollars building something, release it to advisors, and then we all go, oh, no, that's not what I need, right? So this is flipping the script here. This is saying, mm, this is the concept I've fleshed out the benefits. Here's the outline of what it is. Are you interested? And see, based on the volume of interest and the level of interest, then you go hard and you build it at that point. Um, What they've done is dug into all the sort of psychology of high converting landing pages. And if you're not sure what a landing page is, it's basically that, that single page website that just pitches a particular thing. It could be a webinar you're going to, it could be a conference, it could be like whatever it is, you've you've definitely clicked on a landing page yourself. So it's it's tailored to a unique thing, widget experience program course. So they've actually dug into all that psychology of what works and what people need as information to be able to engage with those. And then so you don't have to try and work out what you should add or not. It just steps you through that. Um, I think it's an interesting concept and probably something that we as advisors don't really think we use much, but I wonder if if we tested a bit more about the sort of things we could offer to even our current clients and got their feedback on that through just seeing what they clicked on or what they registered for, then, you know, we might be able to really deliver something that we know is going to hum, uh, really give them value. So check it out and I'd love to hear what you think. Well, that's all we've got for this week, folks. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And if you feel like you are a bit stuck and, you know, maybe like everybody else, it's 2023 has been the fastest possible year ever of all time craziness. Um, You know, you've got some projects, maybe including some tech projects that you're going to need to embark on and you just want to take a step back and do some planning for the year ahead, then Uh, I would love to facilitate a brainstorming session for you and your team, drawing out the next best projects for the business, you know, what tech might assist, how you can all work together to innovate with the practice. This can be in person um, and it will be a really productive and enjoyable day for the team. So if that's of interest, please reach out to me on LinkedIn forward slash PeterMD, P-E-I-T-A-M-D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week Who knows whether it'll be with puppies in the background or not? We can always hope. So remember, advice explorers, stay curious.